I want to do is take you to the fourth floor, which details the rise of some of the trends that we're seeing today in the 1920s and 30s that are repeating themselves today. We're seeing a narrative of grievances. We're seeing um, a political system that uh, is unable to, to resolve or deal with those grievances. We're seeing a fragmented media landscape. Um, we're seeing rising xenophobia and anti-immigrant sentiment. And we're seeing, after these kind of four things, we're seeing populist leaders step in um, and take advantage of these trends. I call these my four ingredients uh, of my populism cake. And my premise is, thank you for that laugh, my premise <laughs> is that the populism, I spent a long time on that analogy, the populism cake is still rising and you can make your own conclusions about the premise and the cake rising. Um, so I, you know, I define populism and, and my debate partner will challenge some of our conceptions about what populism is, but for the sake of simplicity, I define populism as a movement of the people against kind of an entrenched and disinterested elite that is unable to respond to their needs. And if people are getting what they want through the economic, social, and political landscape, they have no reason to be upset. Uh, but that's not the case. Um, many of these grievances relate to a lack of social services or um, the demise of unions uh, or income inequality that is persistent despite um, other kind of economic trends. Um, and when they, despite, when they try to resolve these issues through a political system, they're met with a political system that's not either representative of their needs or where their vote doesn't count. Um, and this is best exemplified by the refrain, I have a vote, but not a voice. And you see these trends rising as well uh, in Europe and in and the United States where political engagement is, dr is, is down. And so lacking a political avenue to resolve these grievances, you find people um, watching more politicized television or engaging in siloed media online. And these kind of disengagement trends are rising as well because media companies don't really have an incentive to move outside of siloed media because siloed media is loyal media and loyal media generates profits. Um, so angry, upset, and afraid, uh, many of these people find targets um, in immigrants. Uh, other minorities, the LGBT community in particular, is experiencing a lot of violence worldwide. Anti-immigrant sentiment is up. Uh, hate crimes are rising. So these trends are also rising. And in this kind of crucible, you see populist leaders step in and they take advantage of these trends and they offer simple <laughs> solutions to complex problems, but these, prop these solutions are illusory. And this is, you see this on the left and the right. And the rise of populist leaders is also going up. European parties uh, that are populist have doubled since 2000 um, and their share of the vote has increased dramatically. Last 10 so, seconds. Last sentence. So, my last sentence is? Last 10 seconds. <laughs> last 10 seconds, okay. You sound like you're laying the plane, I don't want to interrupt right. you. My, so my premise basically is um, that the populism cake is still baking uh, and it's not quite ready to eat just yet. What a delicious intro. <laughs> Thank you, Essen.